hello friends. We're back with another uh, a community wallet, maker wallet, maker challenge wallet. This one's Matter Supply Co. on Instagram. The other day he posted a photo, I think it's of a new wallet he just designed called the Annex. And he posted a photo flat lay on his grid mat, said, make this wallet right from this picture. So I grabbed a screenshot of his post. I've brought it into Illustrator and I'm gonna show you how I will take a photo, scale it up to size, and then make a digital pattern out of it. I've sped up this clip. It's 21 minutes long was the total time it takes me to do this. I've cut it down by a third. So this clip is about seven minutes long. I'm gonna talk over and you'll see how I go using Illustrator, go from a paper template to a digital mockup. I'm using Illustrator. You can use any other similar software. Some of the tools won't be the same. Illustrator has a few things that make pattern design incredibly efficient, like the offset tool. I don't use that in this one because this wallet's also stitchless, which makes this much, much easier. Um, but I'll talk over this and then Afterwards, once it's done, printed out, we'll make the wallet and then we can see the finished product. So again, this one's from Matter Supply Co on Instagram. This is his Annex Wallet Challenge. Go over there now. By the time I post this, he'll probably have his digital pattern up. And I think he's making it available for free. I think, maybe not. Download it, make it yourself, tag him. And uh, let's see, uh, let's see whatever we can come up with. Let's go. Okay, so the photo, I've brought it into Illustrator. Um, I'm just starting off with a square that is one inch by one inch, which, I, which, is, um, which I'm going to now line up with uh, the grid pattern from his photo. So this will get me into the ballpark to start laying this thing out full scale. Once I've got that to scale, I just bring the transparency down on that photo so I can see my, my actual working lines a bit easier and then make another rectangle for the main piece. Once I have it matched up with the photo, I'll then go in and look at the dimensions. And this one's about seven inches by four and three quarters or so. Usually I'll take those dimensions and then just round them off because most people work to kind of round even numbers. So this one's seven by four and five eighths. Curious to know how actually how big his is. And now I made another square up top just for that top piece. And then here I'm using those those cutouts, just using the round or the circle tool. Line it up, make sure that everything's centered and making sure that the circle is centered with the edge of the wallet. This little round punch there, I make sure whenever I'm doing a perfect circle that it's gonna match one of my punches. So that one is a quarter inch punch. And now I'm just figuring out how to draw those lines so that everything is perfectly even when I go to cut it out. So I just put a rectangle at the bottom that matches the width of that cutout, making sure it's centered. And then I'll eventually connect a line from the corner of that rectangle up to the midpoint of that circle. Right there. So again, just making sure everything's centered, connect the two points, and then there's that piece. So now this, these the little cutouts here, I actually end up doing this the incredibly long way before I realize afterwards when I make some tweaks, tweaks to the pattern, I could have done this far more efficiently by using the corner radius tool. So if you look at the rectangles that I make there in the corner, you can see this little white circle. That will automatically create, put a radius on the corner in Illustrator. When I was doing this, I could, I guess I didn't realize that that would be the more efficient way, but I did that after the fact and these corners were done in literally 60 seconds, if not less. 
the way you're watching me do it now is pulling each of these arcs with that tool and illustrator those little that little tail with the blue dot on the end that makes that that'll make a radius so i'm going through kind of figuring out which size looks best appropriate to the to the image and then i just create those guidelines so that i know the pattern is going to be symmetrical on the top and the bottom as you're viewing it now. So there you go. I have to adjust that line down so that it matches what's above it. So this is kind of the manual way to do that process. So here I'm just making sure everything's lined up. And then I'll come in and this is the most tricky part to get this pattern because it's pretty irregular. So right there, I'm figuring out the corner. There's that radius tool. So I should have done that on the two little cutouts that I was just showing you. That would have been way easier. But you can see how well it matches that corner on the pattern. So I'm going through and making that radius there, right on the corner so it's nice and smooth. And then figuring out the most efficient way to, to create this piece, again, with that, that circle tool, just elongate that out making sure everything's lined up. Lining up with the center of that circle so that everything comes off of it once I cut it out nice and smoothly, or nice and evenly, smoothly. What I, this, this actually took me the longest to, to figure them how to do this properly. I eventually get it, but it, uh, it was a little bit of a roundabout way to get it there. But I eventually just draw this pattern manually, mirror it and bring it over to the other side right there. So see, I'll copy this, mirror it and then bring it over. And now it's just a matter of connecting points. And so now I know each of those sides is going to be symmetrical. I connect that point. So I got the two tabs. Now I'm just going through and making those kind of micro adjustments, making the adjustments, making sure everything is lined up. And then we're almost ready. This pattern's almost done. So in real time, we're just about seven minutes or in, in this time, in real time, I was about 20 minutes to do this. So once you get used to whatever software you're using, it's actually very quick to prototype or to digitally create one of your plans. I just have to connect those two points to complete this whole shape. And there's that radius tool again. There we go. So now we'll get into making the wallet. Okay, so digital pattern is done. I've got it cut out just on some regular paper and we're going to use this caviar leather from Rocky Mountain. So this leather is a little bit funny as it doesn't, it's really tough to scribe on the flash side. So what I'm going to do is mark on the opposite side. So taking my pattern, instead of having the outside facing out, I'm just gonna flip it over. So I mark it in the reverse direction. I know the edges are square, so I'll just line up that corner and then I'll use a pen just to outline the rest of this pattern. And it's funny, just like the last, the last video I did working with to somebody else's pattern is, uh, is interesting. When I started doing this, I wasn't downloading other people's patterns. I just started drawing my own. Just grabbed a card, traced it, figured out the dimensions, did all that. So to work to somebody else's patterns is, uh, it's like I said in the last one, it's, it's fun. Um, and just like the last one, it's a, uh, um, 
The last one was was a wrap wrapped all together. This one is a fully wrapped one and no stitching, which I haven't done before. I don't think I need to be super, super accurate with this, but if it did matter, you'd want to place your knife with the inside of that mark so that once you make the cut, the mark is on the scrap. That way you keep your dimensions as accurate as possible. So just go through and get this cut out. So when you have to cut out a piece like this, that has the rounded corner, or the rounded interior, you could use a punch to punch out that circle if you want. If you don't have that, just a super sharp X-Acto blade, or freshly sharpened knife. It's not that difficult to follow that curve. Takes a bit of practice. There you go. If I'm doing a curve like this, what I'm gonna do is cut both long sides first. So that side's cut, that side's cut and then follow this curve right around to intersect with the straight line I've already made. That way, it lines up and then just pops out and you know you've made that cut. Okay, so there we go. So there's the pattern. Now let's uh, try to fold this up and see how it works. Now keep in mind, I got this pattern off of a, just a screenshot. So if you're doing this on your own, you would now go in and say, okay, where do I need to make adjustments to my pattern? So in this case, maybe you tape, make these, these two wings slightly shorter. I also haven't cut, trimmed the top yet. Yeah, see that folds, that actually folds a little bit nicer already. So now I have to lock this tab in. So to do that, I'm going to make, I'm going to actually get some clips, get some clips out here. I'm leaving this on top so you guys can see kind of me thinking through this process and that sometimes this stuff takes a little while. So, got those. I'm 
sure this is all, trying to get this as lined up as I can. So I'll clip that piece. This now wraps around nicely. Clip that down. So now it's all clipped up. Wrapping this around, it just hits the corner there. See, I'm kind of right on the edge. I'd like that to be a little further. Well, there we go, that works. <clears throat> so, what I will do now is I'll take an awl and I'm gonna make a mark right into the corner of the flap. And then I'll connect those two points using my knife and then try to get this little flap wedged right in, wedged right in there. So yeah, now I can see my two marks. So I'll open this up. knife and a ruler connect the dots there we go that's opened up now see if this works again I'm going to use my clips to keep everything Tight. Actually, no, I won't do that down here because I need the room. So that ain't gonna work. So, how is this gonna work? Is this gonna work? I think that's a better question. I'll wedge that in there. And then fold that over. Pushing it through as much as I can. Excuse me while I fiddle with this. I know this is super entertaining. But this is sometimes the reality of all this. There we go. I think we're in. And I'll look down here. I'm just looking down, seeing if I can see that that flap on this side is nice and flat, and it is on that. There we go. Let's zoom in here. And now check out how many cards we got. So we got three here. Two there, two there, two in that pocket, two in that pocket, perfect size in, that worked out well. Do one in the front, and then you could manage one in the middle, but that would be pretty, that's getting pretty tight, two, four, six cards total. Let's take this one out of the center. Yeah, it's too tight, that's too tight. So, take one out of the center, one out of there. Got one in each pocket. So now, how could we make this? That's a cool little, it's a nice little slope there. It's absolutely perfect size. You're getting, not, you're, this, is a, this is a pretty minimalist wallet if I've ever seen it. Yeah, what about a thumb hole in here? That could work.
Okay, so thumb hole, it's a little big, but that's why this would be considered a prototype. Let's see, does it actually function a little bit better? Hopefully it does, or that was kind of all for naught. Yep, that looks great. So that's a real, that's a great feature. So now I would just want to adjust the, the width of this, maybe move it up a little bit, shrink its width, but that works great. And then this one's easy to get access to. Maybe that's your most used card. These ones are less. Give your center pocket, which you can then open up, get access to that one. This leather, actually the texture on this leather is a little, I find it's a little sticky on the cards. And then these ones, you can kind of get in there as well. You could also, you could also could have cut an angle so that this pocket and this pocket actually have more exposed, which would work. So if you chop that angle off, that corner, you maybe wouldn't do the thumb. So there you go, that's a fun little project. Hopefully you learned something about doing the digital pattern design work um, using Illustrator or whatever design features you have. You can see it's not that difficult to take a picture um, and lay it out. If you have that type of software, you can get it for free, use whatever you like, find the similar tools that work and uh, you can start pattern designing digitally makes it a lot more repetitive as well if you then want to get some dies made or printed onto some cardboard. So matter of supply, go get the design there, go download that, try it out, uh, go follow his account as well, and um, we'll see you in the next one. Thanks friends.